all the questions that you still have for the speakers or all the comments about robotic governance or any ideas, criticism, feedback, please share it with us. There are, as far as I counted, eight microphones all over the whole place. Please just step up to a microphone, give a hand sign, and then please ask your question. Are there any questions or comments? Yeah, uh, I would basically like to raise or bring back the topic to the necessity of governance in robotics. And when we look at the recent development, let's say in social networks versus data, data privacy or in workers' regulation versus the so-called sharing economies, things like Uber or Airbnb, uh, we, f we see a lot that there is a struggle between an economic drive to, to make these things while there is a struggle by governing bodies to actually form and start regulating these things. So what's your opinion in the domain of robotics? Where are we? Maybe this might be a nice question for, for all of you to just give a short one, two sentence answer to that. May, might we start with uh, Gert Hetzinger over there? Um, I don't know whether I interpret the term governance in the right way. I think, it, uh, again, it, it, it deals with uh, acceptance or regulation. Um, there are grey areas in the beginning. We have uh, the uh, copters, the drones. Uh, we made the experience just recently, l last week, flying over Neuschwanstein, which is the most famous castle in Germany. <laughs> there are a lot of people. Is it allowed to fly there? How can one uh, find uh, the uh, just a small path between legal action and, and yet some success? Um, we have, of course, now more and more <coughs> applications where people are enthusiastic, as far as I feel it, for example. Um, I do not talk about the vacuum cleaners, but the, um, uh, the lawn mowers, uh, they're getting more popular. I talked with a few politicians uh, in Bavaria who said, well, I have bought such a system in my garden, and it's amazing. So uh, there's a very uh, positive attitude. Um, on the other side, yesterday in, in German TV, there was a report about the conference here and, and uh, started a big discussion about uh, fighting robots, autonomously fighting robots in wars, uh, that they should be uh, f forbidden uh, now. Um, there's, there will be a lot of uh, discussion in the future and, and uh, I think the, the focal point at the moment is are uh, the flying robots, what are they allowed to do, observe neighbors or not. Um, in medicine, I think we are uh, already further with the Da Vinci robot and its, its success. That was uh, a breakthrough and uh, of course nothing should happen, nothing negative should happen, but we have lines of people who are waiting to be operated with, with such a robot and uh, yeah, I just wanted to say it's a process and, and not yet a final decision how it, it will go in the future. So. <clears throat> One question that we face, we often face uh, in, in the European Commission is the trade-off between innovation and regulation. So this, I think, goes to the heart of your question in the sense that uh, uh, on the one hand, uh, the, the research and innovation program uh, is encouraging, advocating innovation, development, uh, research. Um, and once it starts hitting the limits of the existing framework and existing regulatory uh, um, uh, context, then of course, precisely the question that you raised comes, comes up. And what we are looking into is ways of, although we are not actually directly in charge of any, any legislation in the part of of the Commission where I work, we are trying to make those colleagues who do work actually on, on, on legislation directly, uh, make them aware of the issues and make them also aware of the need to find the right balance um, between innovation and regulation. There's no simple answer to that in my view and, uh, and I certainly wouldn't dare to, to, to give you any kind of particularly strong statement about that. I do think it's a balancing act however. Well, if we look uh, 
around uh, the world, we see so much interest by the youngsters uh, with the robots. We have a lot of clubs and there are a lot of uh, uh, programs, educational programs that are bringing the, this fun aspect about robotics. And uh, I think outreach is a very, very important uh, uh, aspect of uh, also our work that is to really explain and bring this uh, technology to, uh, to the public and also use it in education. Uh, I think uh, the success, uh, uh, as mentioned by Gerd, uh, uh, in the domain of, of medical robotics has been amazing. In fact, every time uh, I'm, I'm talking about robotics, when we mention the impact of, of robots in, in uh, medical surgeries, in all the, those different applications, uh, people are, wow, amazed. I mean, this is something that everyone is accepting. And, and, and uh, another aspect of robotics is, uh, as uh, mentioned also, so in the morning is it's not only about robots. Robotics is uh, really this uh, science and technologies that are coming to assist the human, extend capabilities of the human, better understand the human, and uh, uh, perform, uh, uh, develop systems that can bring uh, re-education and uh, 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 performance enhancement and uh, uh, all kind of things that can have immediate impact on human. So. Uh, this is, these are things that really are important that we, we need also to emphasize and bring uh, as we pursue our research and development. I think it's a very good and it's a smart question. Uh, I believe that um, this question is connected to the degree of um, um, like robots can act autonomously and uh, and with our notion of responsibility. If robots start acting and behaving in a framework which is defined by our legal framework and our um, traditions of the society in a way that we expect uh, entities acting there should be able to take the responsibility for what they do, then we have as a society to come up with an answer for that. And this uh, will require some need of regulation. As we today have natural uh, persons and legal entities uh, so that uh, enterprises can act on their own account. And I, I feel that uh, in, in several years from now on we have an um, uh, additional flavor of those legal entities which could be uh, technological entities. I, actually, it's an interesting question, you know. <coughs> uh, many new things, uh, many internet new things, uh, you know, just like uh, Uber, Airbnb, internet uh, application. In many, many countries, based on legal issues, regulation, government regulation, you know, in, in some countries, you know, refuse to use the uh, a uh, new application, just like a Uber. So I, I think, you know, yeah, we have many, many concerns about that, but it's a new trend. It's just a new baby, you know. We need to accept it. It's, it's a society trend. Our government, our legal staff, need to be changed someday. So it's because it's a trend for, for a society, for a new world. That's my answer. Thank you. So there's a lot of new folks in the room. I want to quickly remind of, us of the question I think was about the importance of governance in the context of robotics. Um, Fifteen years ago, I worked at Sun Microsystems, and Bill Joy, one of the founders, wrote a Wired article titled, Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. And he pointed to three technologies, robotics, genetic engineering, and nanotechnology, and described in this article what he perceived as um, very significant threat um, to humans as a species. Um, you sir mentioned the Bill Gates article from 2007 um, about the dawn of robotics. Um, so I think we, we're living in a world where there's great expectations about the threats and the opportunities. And inherently, um, with all those opportunities that we're experiencing, there's a lot of uncertainty. 
which makes me believe we do need a framework to consider um, gov a governance structure that's very holistic, that includes stakeholders from business, technology, um, politics, um, across a very wide spectrum. But I'm still optimistic that we're going to be able to solve some of the risks and concerns and challenges that came up um, over the last five hours. But um, I'm, I'm very encouraged by some of the work that was presented today as well from the European Union in terms of attacking this very complex issue of uh, developing a governance structure that allows innovation to happen um, while making sure that we pay attention to all the risk and build security structures that really help everyone involved. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. There's one last question, then. Actually, it's not a question. I have a comment. Um, I think that the robotic governance should include three R's from the engineering point of view, which is robustness, reliability, and repeatability. I am a little bit concerned that there is too much excitement and belief that robots are here and they will do all the right things. And I agree that you need to worry about the political and the economic consequences. But I don't feel that we are ready yet there. I walked through the exhibits and it warms my heart. I have been in this business for 40 years plus. And it warms my heart what I see there, but it's still kind of demonstration cases by and large. And if we really want to make an impact of robots living side by side with us, we will have to make much more serious effort in assessing and designing robots that are reliable, robust, able to accommodate to unexpected situations, not just what you have learned, but dealing with unexpected situation and be repeatable. Otherwise, this whole enthusiasm will fall down on its face. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think this was a Great summary, um, which leads me actually here to my last slide. A very, very big thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to the organizers. Thank you for having me with the, the weird idea of coming up with something like robotic governance and the Futurist Forum. And a very warm and cordial thank you to all the speakers. Thank you very much for being here today. Um, I do have a little hidden agenda and which is, I want really to spark this discussion about robotic governance. This is also why I put up all the, the, the web addresses behind me. I, we will put up all the material that we can put up. I already heard with some of the material it's a bit difficult because it's either confidential or official or whatever. So we will put up what is available. Whoever of you wants to get involved in this discussion, please reach out to any of us or hopefully to me. And the second thing is I hope that we can set up, this is why I called it the first IEEE IROS Futurist Forum. I hope there will be a second one next year and many following ones. So first of all, thank you very much to the speakers. And with that, I want to wrap up. I close the session because the following plenary speaker is already standing there behind shaking his head what stupid stuff I'm talking about. So thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Have a great conference and I close the session.